I welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit into this time that we come to worship and praise our Lord. I, I want to thank all who are in attendance and those who are watching online. Today is a, a cold day, so uh, whether you're with us or you're at home, we're glad that you're here with us. Uh, if you have a chance, please sign the guest book, pass it down the aisle for others to sign it. Um, just a couple announcements for today. The office will be closed tomorrow in, in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Starting next Sunday, following the church service, we're going to have what's called a prayer warriors meeting. We'll meet right here in the fellowship, uh, right here in the, in the sanctuary. And um, so we're going to be praying over our states, our personal, uh, national, and world prayer concerns during that time. And if you've never been to a, a corporate prayer meeting, I, I highly love for you to be here. Uh, it will be about 30, 45 minutes, and then you could go over to dinner after that. So, but that will be happening next Sunday. Um, so, uh, also want to let people know that we are going to have, on January 28th, uh, recognition for those who would like to join the church and so if you are, if you've been attending for a long time but have never joined the church as a member, uh, I want to give you the opportunity to, uh, to go and uh, join the church on the 28th. So if you would like to do that, please see me following church or write me an email and uh, we'll get that all set up. So again, we thank you for being here and let us worship and praise our Lord.
morning. <clears throat> if you would all please stand, if you're able, and join in the call to worship. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. O oh Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O oh Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O oh Lord, remind us that you lead us. O oh Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able and join in the hymn of promise from the larger hymnal and projected on the screen in the United Methodist hymnal on page 203. <clears throat> seated you may be seated and uh, at this time now we come to recognize our new leaders our new leaders in this church 
uh, for the board recognition. And so I would like to first recognize those who are going off the board. Um, Linda Anderson, if you're here, would you come up? Uh, Keith Dial and Susan Metz are all going off the board. And so let's give them a round of applause for the wonderful work they have done. There you are. <laughs> Come on up here. And so I would like to introduce the new members who are going to be coming on board. Ron Till. Linda Meese and Janice Naylor. So if you're here, please come over as well. Um, and I'd also like to have the, the remaining board who is here, uh, please come forward as well. So Sarah, Val, Val and who else am I missing? Dee. Um, we're going to pray for everyone, so... Oh, Anne, um, so, yes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for these wonderful leaders and for the work they have done and the work they're, they're, uh, that God's going to do through them this year. So, if you would please uh, pray with me. Let's pray. Gracious and almighty God, we pray for the anointing that only you can give the anointing of direction, vision, wisdom, discernment. We pray for each and every board member that we have here, for those who have done the work for so many years and are stepping off. We thank you so very much for their hard work, dedication. And we know, Lord, that they have work to do beyond the board that you have called them to do. And so we, pray, we send them forth to do the work that you have for them and that you would continue to encourage them in all that they do. And for our new board members who are stepping up and our existing board members, we pray that you would guide us in all that we do as we make disciples for you, for the transformation of the world here in Wichita, to the people we come in contact with. May your anointing be upon us. We thank you so very much for, for what you are going to do this year. And I pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. So let's give our board a round of applause. And if you want to pass off those books to the ones that are going to be here, and if they're not here, I'll take them. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so thank you, board. You can go back to your seats. So thank you. <laughs> okay, so we come to our time of lifting our prayer concerns before the Lord here today. Um, you'll notice that we have Mary Ann Eichmann. Uh, we lift her up in prayers as she is still dealing with health concerns. Uh, so this we lift in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Our um, I did receive a phone call from Kyle Buck. Um, his wife, Judy, has been rushed to the hospital. Uh, she fell, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. So we pray uh, for Judy. Lord, in your mercy. I lift up in praise Kevin Hartman. He had no new lesions while he was in Mayo Clinic. And so we praise God for that and for, uh, for God's wisdom to be upon him and all that's before him. We pray that, uh, Lord, in your mercy. Please lift up Pat Johnson in, uh, in your prayers. Uh, she has a birthday coming up on January 10th. So I guess that's not something you need to pray about. But definitely celebrate with Pat on that. So um, we also have David and Leslie, the year anniversary on the 17th, I believe. Yes, the 17th. So we lift both of those uh, up in, in praise. So I do want to thank the sound, the video team, uh, the ushers, the greeters, the chancel choir, the staff, and all who have gone to make this service special. Um, it's, it's cold outside, but it's warm in here, and so we're so glad that each and every one of you are here. So with that, uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty Father, we come to you on behalf of our church leaders who faithfully serve you, serve your flock. We thank you for them and their willingness to serve with humility and courage. We ask that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit so that they may live quiet and peaceful lives in godliness, reverence, abiding by your will at all times. 
Help them to stay focused on you, Lord, instead of the distractions of the world. Equip them with strength in their faith so that they may not be swayed by temptation or compromise truth for personal gain. Grant them courage they need to stand firm in their convictions, even when faced with opposition or ridicule. We also ask for your protection from the evil forces as they strive to lead according to uh, as they as they strive to lead according to your will. And above all else, we pray for a desire within the hearts to seek after you at all times, to study your word, and to pray powerful prayers that will move the mountains on behalf of your people. I pray for today's message that you have laid upon my heart. Father, I pray that you'd open the hearts and minds and to those who have received it as I step aside. May you step in and guide me in all that I do. Finally, I do pray for the cold weather that we have here today. I pray for those who are out in the cold because they don't have a roof over their head or enough food to eat. I pray, Lord, that you would help those who are overlooked by society and that they are precious in your sight. Help us to reach out in love and meet the needs that we can. And so, Father, we thank you for the promise and the hope of this new year. And we look forward to it with expectancy and faith. This I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time now... Uh, I invite the, all children of all ages to come forward for the young disciple time with Miss Mary. I, I might as well sit next to you, huh? Thank you, Miss Emily, for coming up too. Hello, ma'am. Good morning, you guys. Thank you for coming during this cold day. So I wanted to show you something this morning. Henry's already been playing with it. You probably see this every time you go to the doctor, right? Even the eye doctor sometimes now, they check your blood pressure. Do you remember what it's called? A stethoscope, yes, thank you, <laughs> good job. So many people use this at work like I did as a nurse, and you listen to people's hearts, lungs, and even earlier, Henry, I put it where? I put it, oh, yes, I put it on your heart, but I also put it on your belly because you, you can listen to bowel sounds with it. You can do all sorts of stuff with a stethoscope. So do you want to listen to my heartbeat? Put that in your ears like you were doing earlier for me, and I'm going to stick this on my heart. Can you hear my heartbeat? What does it sound like? Lower? Okay. <laughs> He's directing me. Can you hear it? Yep. Is it beating pretty fast? I hope so. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Now close your eyes and I want you to, really fast? Yeah, probably. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to listen again. Okay, now put it a little bit further. There you go. Does it sound any different? Maybe slower probably because the person is younger <laughs> and in better physical condition. Yes. All right. So would it be easier to tell people apart by how they look or what their heartbeat sounds like, do you think? How they look probably, yeah. But in our scripture for today, from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7, it says, The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So he was talking about a time when God sent Samuel to get one of Jesse's sons to be the new king after Saul. And Jesse had a lot of sons. 
Yes, but shh, spoilers. Okay, Jesse had a lot of sons. So Samuel started to look at each of them one by one. And he assumed that the firstborn would be the chosen king. But the Lord said, do you know what the Lord said about his firstborn son? Do you remember, Henry? No, okay, all right. The Lord said, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. It was finally the very last son, David, who was chosen. And it was an unexpected choice because he was the youngest boy and he was a sheep herder. But the Lord could see in his heart that he was the right choice. So have you guys ever looked at someone and assumed something about them based on what they looked like or how they acted? I think a lot of us do. We talked about that in youth, making assumptions, um, and that um, I assumed that the boys ate five dozen eggs every day for breakfast. And uh, they said, yeah, that was pretty much true. So I was right in that assumption. But, or you might think, like, that guy is really tall. He must play basketball or some kind of sports. Or that girl gets really good grades, so she must not work hard at all, right? She must just get amazing grades without trying. Or that person on the internet was really kind to me and has a nice picture, so they must be a good person. That can happen too. But unfortunately, as humans, we often make mistakes when we make assumptions about people. It's hard to judge what another person is thinking or who they are deep down by just looking at them. So that's why God wants us to be caring and honest, friendly and loving, respectful and patient deep down in our hearts because that's where it counts, not our outward appearance. And he wants us to surround ourselves with other people with good hearts too. And sometimes that is hard to have good hearts because we're human. And things like jealousy and anger and other things sneak in. But every day is created new by God, and we have the chance to change our bad things to good again. So let us pray. Dear God, we know that you can see what is in our hearts. Help us to remember to fill our hearts with good things. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for coming up. So as the children go back to be with their folks, we uh, come to a time of offering. So I invite the ushers to come forward for this morning's offering.
This morning's scripture comes from 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Sam, Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse a Beth Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed Jesse and his sons and <clears throat> sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely his anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on him, the height of his structure, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called <clears throat> Abunadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Ashama pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily down upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you. Thank you, choir, for that wonderful song. I heard a story about the Western Union. This was during when they had a telegraph, you know, the Morse code that you had to interpret. Um, and so it was a sought-after job. People from all over the nation came to, uh, to apply for this. Well, the day of the interview, there was about 50 people in this room, all waiting to be interviewed. But it, about an hour later, no, one, no executive had come out to interview anyone. And so they were all sitting there when all of a sudden this one gentleman's head popped up. And he gets up from his seat and he goes to the door where he knows the executive is, enters it. And people around there are looking at this guy thinking he must be crazy. But upon a few minutes later, the executive finally came out and the people were thinking, oh, great, now we could have the interview. But the executive says, um, we found our man. You were all free to go home. And the people in the room were upset. Hey, I've been here for, a, for an hour waiting to be interviewed. And you got this guy? Why is that? Why, why didn't you interview us? Well, the executive finally said to them, well, if you had been listening, the telegraph machine was saying, if you understand this, go through the door. The job is yours. And he was the only one who understood and got the job. Are you listening? Are you listening? You see, one thing that is for sure is that if we are Christians, we are leaders. If you have Christ in your heart, you are a leader. Now, you might say, I don't feel like I'm a leader, but yes, you are. You're a leader at your work. You're a leader at, among people. You're a leader at the church. You are a leader in your home. God has called us to be leaders. It's part of our DNA. God didn't save us and put us on his mantle to collect dust. He called us. He saved us. He sanctified us to be the leaders that will glorify God. And today we are starting a new series about leadership, looking at the life of King David, especially his earlier years. The years where he, he took on Goliath, the years where he dealt with, uh, dealt with challenges from King Saul, the years where he was a leader to be looked at and, and admired. And so, before I begin, it's important to understand that more is written in the Bible about King David than anyone else in the Bible, well, other than Jesus. King David had been written not only in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The, the second runner-up is two people, uh, Abraham and Joseph, who both have 14 chapters dedicated to their lives. And the one after that is Elijah, who has 10 chapters dedicated to his life. But listen to this. David had 66 chapters dedicated to his life. How he grew up, what he did. Not to mention, he was mentioned 59 times in the New Testament. This is a guy that God wanted us to know about. This is a guy that God wanted us to understand about. The Bible tells us so much about David because God's people, thousands of years later, needed, needed to learn a lesson from this man's story. Not only about his victories, but also his defeats. And even though David made a lot of mistakes... He was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. And through David's lineage, ultimately, the king of kings and the Lord of lords would come from his lineage, Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, David is a foreshadow of what was to come. 
Now, to understand David's life, we have to go back to the 10th century B.C. to find out where this all began. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, we hear how Samuel the prophet had told Saul the king that he has been rejected by God. That God is going to find a king after his own heart. You see, Israel was looking for a man, but God was looking for a heart. A heart that was fully devoted to him. And we got to understand a little bit about what kind of leader God is looking for. What kind of, what's, what's the measuring stick that God has for a leader? Well, it all starts with right here, the heart. God's measuring stick for leadership is all about the heart. Because a healthy leader, a healthy heart from a leader brings healthy leadership. But a toxic heart brings toxic leadership. And this is what we learn through Saul. He allowed his heart to gradually turn against God. You can't be a great leader without God leading. And the difference between David and Saul is that Saul, he looked good. Oh, he looked good. He was strong, he was wealthy. He was the type of man that everyone would say, now there is my king. But over time, Saul, his heart showed his true colors. And we started to see how insecure Saul was as a leader. He became paranoid about what people thought. And he was truly untrusting towards God. He started to take matters into his own hands. You know, let's not get this mixed up because David, he sinned as well. David lusted after Bathsheba. David sent Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, with a letter that was his execution letter. David was a poor father. But the difference between Saul and David is that David trusted the Lord even when he missed it. And Saul trusted himself. Saul cared about what he looked like. What people thought about him. Saul wasn't broken when God's heart was broken. But David, he was broken when he broke God's heart. Saul, he was broken when he got caught. God is not looking for a perfect man or woman. That's important for us to, to hear. He's not looking for someone who's got it all together. He's looking for a heart that's fully devoted to him, which leads me to today's text. God told Samuel that you have mourned long enough for Saul. I want you to go, and I want you to go to the house of Jesse. And I want you to anoint one of his sons because he is going to be the new king of Israel. But Samuel was like, "Uh, if the king finds out about this, I'm going to die. And so God, he's so wise. He told Samuel, bring a heifer and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. And that's exactly what he does. He goes over to Jesse's house and says, I have come to make a sacrifice Bring each of your sons before me. And so the first one that comes out is Eliab. And Samuel thought that here is the Lord's anointed. Here is the new king. But Samuel missed it. Now, if Samuel missed it, who was the, the, the judge of Israel for over 50 years, it's a pretty good chance that we miss it as well. That we miss because we look at the outward appearance rather than what's in the heart. Often we look through eyes of flesh. We're not looking through eyes of faith. You see, Samuel, he looked strong. Uh, uh, Samuel was looking for someone who looked strong. And once again, he was looking for another King Saul. But God was looking for a heart, a man who had a heart 
for God. And so he said to uh, Samuel, Eliab, he's a good person, but I have rejected him. He is not the one I am going to, that you're going to anoint. In fact, in fact, Jesse, he brought out seven of his sons before Samuel. And each time, they were all rejected. Finally, uh, uh, Samuel asked, do you have any other sons? Jesse had brought out seven sons, but he had eight. Seven is the number of completion. Eight is the number of new beginnings. And so Jesse missed it. Why? Because he didn't value David. David was out in the field, he said, taking care of the sheep and goats. He's, he's a stinky, dirty little kid. He didn't believe in David. You know, maybe you grew up in a house where your parents didn't believe in you. Maybe you grew up in a house where your parents didn't see you. Well, here's one thing that we can learn. Even though we're not visible by, God, by human eyes, we are visible and valued in God's eyes. It could be that God's hiding you. Not because he doesn't like you, but because he's preparing you for greatness. Little did David know that working out in the fields, tending the sheep, would make him into the great person to be the shepherd of the people of Israel. So never underestimate the humili humiliating seasons of life that we go through. So Jesse, he calls David. And he says, we're not going to have a meal until he arrives. And they're waiting. Waiting for him to come. You know, there are things that we are waiting through that won't come into fruition until we show up. There are dreams and opportunities and promotions that won't happen until we show up. And this is important right now. Because maybe you're serving and you don't even realize that God is preparing you for something. David didn't know that serving out in the fields, taking care of not his sheep, but his father's sheep, that God was, was preparing him to take care of the sheep of Israel. David would be anointed for the process that would be difficult but God was preparing him to become one of the greatest kings of Israel other than Jesus. But it would not be an easy process. Now, some of us are walking through seasons of humiliation. But what looks like humiliation is actually preparation for an acceleration to the destiny that God is calling us to. What God is doing right now is molding and shaping and preparing us to be all that God has called us to be. God has put leadership in all of us. And if there's one thing we can learn from Saul's leadership is that leadership doesn't last forever. Leadership is a form of stewardship. If you don't steward your leadership right at any moment, God can pull you out of that position. Make no mistakes. God knows how to put kings and queens in positions of leadership. And he also knows that leaders who aren't led by God will self-destruct in their own leadership. Is God leading your hearts? For David, it was continually that my hope is in God, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so David, he comes in from the field. He's uh, stinking, he's, he's uh, taking care of sheep for who knows how long. But he comes in from the house, 
And all of his brothers roll their eyes. All the seven who had been rejected by God roll their eyes as they see this little squirt come into the house. But in verse 13 it says, And so David stood among his brothers, and Samuel took a flask of olive oil that he had brought to anoint David with oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And Samuel returned to Ramah. God will make you shine the most in front of people who don't like you. They didn't make you so they can't break you. They didn't call you so they can't disqualify you. Friends, David would be the future king of Israel, but not yet. Saul was still on the throne, and it would be years before David would actually be appointed to to the position of king. And so there are so many things that we can learn from this story, but I'd like to give you three. David was faithful in the field. He was faithful where God had him. He was faithful in the field where God placed him. He was faithful to take care of the sheep. Even after he was anointed king, what did he do? He went out and served his brothers. He served his father's sheep. He served. He was faithful until God promoted him. And the same is true with with us. God is not looking for us to be successful. He wants us to be faithful. And if we're faithful, it doesn't matter what comes our way, God will be glorified, God will be lifted up, and we will be fulfilling our right call. So the first thing is you got to be faithful in your field, whatever that might be. But secondly, David was faithful when forgotten. When the world forgot him, God didn't. When his dad forgot him, it was all good because God in heaven was looking down on this young shepherd. He was looking at David in the field. He was watching him from heaven as he was watching how he took care of sheep that weren't his. He was watching David. He's watching everything he did. And the same is true for us. He's watching us. He's watching how... We deal with our grandkids, our children. He's watching how we we minister to people in the community through kind words and actions. He's watching when we think no one else is watching. He is watching. Are you being faithful when no one's watching? Are you being faithful in the little things? So not only... Was David faithful in the field? He was faithful when he was forgotten. But the third, he was faithful in the future. Well, how do you be faithful in the future, you might ask? Well, when Samuel whispered into David's ear, you're going to be king, and then left to Ramah, David didn't get a big head. He continued to serve. He continued to live his life as he would normally because he had a heart for God. He was faithful to say, Lord, my hope is in you all day long. And he never lost that. He recognized that the seeds that were planted today were bringing about a harvest in the future. And the same is true for us. What are the seeds that God are planting in your life today that one day, as long as we remain faithful, they will come to fruition in his time for his plan and for his purpose? You see, God wants, us to, make, wants to make us men and women after God's heart. And an interesting side note is that David, King David, he's the only person who has ever been labeled that in the Bible. There's no other person, not even the New Testament, who is known as a man after God's heart, a man or woman after God's heart. So before I leave here today, I want you 
to to allow the Holy Spirit to check your heart. Maybe you're a Christian, maybe you're not a Christian. But healthy hearts produce healthy leadership. So what was the difference between David and Saul? What was the difference between King David and King Saul? Well, Saul had the fear of man, uh, had the had, had fear of man. David had fear of God. Saul was a warrior. David was peaceful. Saul thirsted for man's applause. David was thirsty for God's presence. Saul was paranoid. David was peaceful. Saul raged with jealousy. David was full of love. How's your heart right now? How are you handling rejection? How are you handling when people hate you? How are you handling being overlooked? How's your heart right now? Through difficulties, trials, discouragement, tribulation, feeling invisible to the world, cling to God as he clings to you. Secondly, maybe you think to yourself, well, I am too late. It's too late for me. I've messed up too much. I failed. I failed my family. I failed at work. I failed in the community. There's good news. Saul, he could have been forgiven. He could have been redeemed. He could have been the person, but his heart was hard. His focus was wrong. And the truth is that God can forgive anything. He can help us to become the parent, the grandparent that God is calling us to be. He can help us become the leader that God has called us to be. But it's got to start with our hearts. Are we allowing God to heal past hurts? Are we allowing God to raise us up and to be our comforts when the world knocks us down? If you struggle, this is a struggle for you, realize That Jesus, who had the crown of thorns put on his head, the whip on his back, who died on the cross, he did it so that we can have hope and forgiveness. Jesus, who raised from the dead, can raise us, can resurrect us if we feel that there is no hope. But it's got to start with our heart. Turn to him. Because only Jesus can give us the forgiveness we need, the salvation we need. Don't leave today without letting God work in your hearts. Work in your disappointment. Work in you today. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and almighty God, I thank you so very much for the love that only you can give. Well, Even when we mess up, even when we we fail, even when we put our foot in our mouth. You are the God who loves us, who says you are redeemed, you are forgiven. You are a cherished child of God. And so, Father, as we go forth from this place, help us to let go of the baggage, let go of the junk, let go of the past, and focus on you, to be the men and women that you have called us to be, to be the leaders within our church, within our community, within our homes, within our work, within the people we come in contact with. Because the world out there is so dark, and we need your light to shine through us. So we pray your special anointing that only you could give to be upon us, and may you be glorified in all that is done. I pray this in Christ Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen.
please stand if you're able and join in the hymn of dedication projected on the screen and in the larger hymnals on page 581. benediction. Let us pray. Father, send us forth from this place empowered by your spirit to do the good work that you have before us, knowing that all that we do, you are the one who gives us the ability, the graces, and the talents to be your hands and feet here and to those we come in contact with. Empower us. Help us to know which way to go. Show us where we need to be, and may everything be done for your glory. We pray this all in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen.